Hi, this is Glenn. This is a video on how to take an STL file, make it modifiable in Fusion 360, and then modify it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my STL file in. To do that, I open this left side window um, in Fusion 360, and then I'm going to click on the little cloud icon. Once I've got the cloud icon, I'm going to drag my STL file onto here, and I'm going to click Upload and let it uh, do its little thing. Okay, once the upload is done, then I've got the uh, pick over here on my left side, and this is a little guitar pick that I'm going to modify for my cousin. So I've got a new uh, project open over here. I'm going to right-click that and do Insert into Current Design. It's going to drop... Oh, I have to save it. So I'm going to save this as guitar pick, and then I'm going to insert the guitar pick into the current design. Now, it's not rotated the way I want it to be rotated, so I'm going to click on this axis of the rotation, and I'm going to spin it to negative 90 degrees, and then I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got this guitar pick, but if you look at the facets of this, you can see that it's made up of a bunch of triangles, and that's because it starts as an STL file. So STLs don't know that this is one big contiguous surface, or that this is a curve, or that this is a curve. To an STL, this is just a whole bunch of triangles. So what I want to do is convert this into a body that I can edit and merge with other bodies in um, Fusion 360. To do that, uh, what I want to use is a, a tool down in here on the mesh body that lets me convert it to some other thing I can't remember the name of right now. But I can't do that with history turned on. This is really, to me, bizarre. So I'm going to unselect that. I'm going to go up here to the top of my project. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to Do Not Capture Design History. I'm going to let that happen. And now I can do more advanced stuff with this mesh body. I can right click this. And now, oh, sorry. I can right click this. And now I can mesh to B rep. And this is what I wanted. But this isn't even shown if I have the history stuff turned on, which I think is goofy. But I'm going to click that. It's going to now convert this madness into a new body. So now it's going to appear up here. Um, and so I no longer need this, um, this silly mesh thing. Instead, I have this happier. Um, Fusion 360 body, and I can merge stuff with this, and I can save it out combined with other elements, like I'm going to put my cousin's name on this, um, and I can merge them, and then I can save this out as an STL combined with other stuff now that it's a body. But when it was a mesh body, I couldn't really do very much with it at all. All right, now that I've got that process done, I'm going to turn design history back on, and now I'm going to go through, um, and I'll show you how, this is only three minutes, I'll show you how I did the rest of it. So I'm going to do a sketch, text. I'm going to go top, because that's kind of the angle that I want to be thinking about. And I'm just going to click over here. And it, whatever, I'm going to move this in a second. I'm going to do that. I like this Jive Talk font because it's nice and contiguous. I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom out so I can see everything in the project. Um, I think. There we go. And I'm going to move the name. Oh, I'm going to move this over to here. I'm going to redo my fit. Now, on this text, I need to make it a little smaller. So I'll grab this little circle down here, and it lets me shrink this guy. Um, that's, good. that's about right. Maybe a little bigger. With a 3D printer, the bigger, kind of the cleaner it'll print. Yeah, that's going to be good. Okay, now what I need to do with this is I need to extrude it. So I'm going to move it so it's away from this, because the extrusion stuff doesn't seem to like overlapping with the other thing. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. I'm going to click this. I'm going to extrude it out uh, one millimeter. I'm going to hit OK. And then when I go home, I should see a little 3D of my cousin's name and a 3D of the pick. Uh, I'm going to move the pick down. So I grab this arrow and I can move it down so that it's near that. I'm going to redo fit so that they're sort of in the same space. I'm going to go to the top. I'm not very good at this. I got this like, you know, I started using this thing like a week ago. So forgive my slowness, those of you who are experts. Uh, I'm going to move this crazy thing down. Um, I'll just move the pick. All right, so there's that. <laughs> Completely failed at that. All right, I'm going to move the pick down so it's near the name. I'm going to go fit. I'm so inept. Uh, I'll move this over here. 
of it up so they're sort of nearish. All right, see how they're starting to starting to blend together there. And if I go to the right view, I can probably see this a little easier. Um, so now I can see I've got the uh, the guitar pick and the name are are overlapping in this kind of perfect way that I'm that I'm looking for because once I if I if I put them like this they're gonna smoosh together in the resulting STL and his name will be on the pick and I'm gonna choose how much of his name I want there he's kind of annoying so I don't want too much of his name um, all right and now I'm gonna go to the top view so I can get it centered well pretty good okay cool and then maybe I can hit OK somehow. No, apparently I can't hit OK. All right, I'll just hit Enter. Maybe that'll work. No, I hit Escape and lost all my changes. Oh, well, I'll redo it. OK, I redid it and came back. So this is how the final thing looks, uh, which is pretty good, I think. And so now I can, over here, I can right click on the, um, the top level object, and I can save this whole thing out as an STL, which is exactly what I wanted to start with. Um, had I done it the other way, I wouldn't have been able to. Um, and the workflow I've been using is I open then the STL in Cura to make sure that uh, the object looks right and all that. So here's how it looks in Cura. And it seems like it's always rotated funny in Cura. I don't know why. Uh, but if I do that, then everything works out. And I can see that it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I, I'm still printing with a raft because I'm noob, and I'll save this out to a toolpath. I'll just save it there. And then the other thing that I've been doing as a final check is to open it up in this Repetier host to confirm that, yeah, everything looks right. It's got the raft, it's got the name, the path and all that looks good. So everything looks fine here. And so I am ready to print. So I hope that helps. The, the main weirdness is that when you bring an STL in, it's not editable. And so you have to do not capture design history. And then when you select that STL um, mesh body, then you'll be able to convert it into a regular body. And then you can merge it with your cousin's name. Hope this helps. Bye.